What's up guys? This is Brent with Western Equipment. Now let's go ahead and start with talking about the model number on this John Deere X754. On John Deere tractor style mowers, we're either going to have a prefix of an S or an X. Now in an S, we can have the 100 series and the 200 series. Now these mowers can also be sold not only at the dealership, but also in the large box stores such as Lowe's and the Home Depot. Now, once we move up to an X, the X series are going to be dealer exclusive models. So these are gonna be your X 300s, X 500s, and the X 700s. So the X seven here, Seven is going to indicate the size of the mower. And this is going to be in the largest size of the tractor style mowers. Now the next digit is going to indicate whether the mower is gas or diesel. So if it has a three here, it's going to be a gas model and the five indicates that it is a diesel. Now our last digit here is going to indicate the type of drive function this machine has. So a four, for instance, is going to indicate that this machine is four wheel steer. If there was an eight here, that would indicate that it is four wheel drive. And then also when we're in the X730 series, we could have a nine here as well, meaning that it has four wheel drive and four wheel steer. So what this model number shows is it's in the largest class, it's a diesel and it is a four wheel steer. Once you move up into these X700 machines, you, like I said, you are in that largest frame series of the lawn and garden tractors before you jump into an actual tractor, which would be a 1023E or a 1025R. So these machines get used for a lot of different things. So I like to go over the outside of this machine first, talking about some of the styling and some of the features that you're gonna see. So for instance, here at the front, we're going to have the extra large incandescent and headlights here at the front as well as rear lights on this machine so you will have backup lights when you start going in reverse that are going to turn on also you're just going to have those rear tail lights that will be on as well that way whenever you're moving and traveling with this machine you will be able to be seen now you're also going to have here at the front a very large grill opening here you're also going to have hood vents on the side and also vents towards the rear of the hood as well as once you move up into the x700 these are going to be liquid cooled machines which i'll show a little bit more about here in a minute when we get to the engine now also here at the front of the machine one of the things you're going to see is you're going to see this bracket that's coming out in a way from the hood of our tractor this is going to be an actual weight bracket on this machine so it is meant to hold suitcase weights here in the front because like i said once we move up into these larger tractors we're able to do more things for them therefore we may need that counterweight here in the front some of the other things that you're going to see as we move on back is we're going to see a lot larger foot platform here in the middle we're going to have those larger fenders that go out over those larger rear tires with the handles on each side then once we move to the very back of the machine you're going to see just how wide that back is and you're also going to see what looks sort of like the back of a normal tractor because with these you do have the option of adding in that rear PTO where you have that PTO shaft at the back to drive those rear PTO implements. So let's go ahead and get underneath the hood of this machine and talk about our engine and also show you where those different service points on this engine are going to be located. So first of all in the 754 we are in a diesel so this is going to be a three cylinder 24 horsepower Yanmar diesel engine. Right here on top you're going to see that the manufacturer right here is Yanmar. You're also going to have the John Deere engine serial number right here in the front. But just so that you're clear, this is not a John Deere engine. It is going to be an engine produced by Yanmar. Now, whenever we're looking at those service points right here on top, first thing we're going to see is this orange cap here. This is going to be an engine fill for engine oil. Then we're going to have our dipstick right down here to be able to check that oil level. And then right down below a little further is going to be your engine oil filter. So very easy right there with all of the oil system features. Now, once we move up and over, we're going to have our air filter. And then right here at the back of our air filter is going to be the air filter restriction valve. What this is going to do is this is actually going to send you a message here up on your display panel to let you know if you are getting clogs in your air filter because it will read how the air is flowing through that filter. So this is a very nice feature. This is going to be one of those premium features that you get when you move up into that X700 series. Now, when we're looking for our fuel filter, that's going to be right 
here at the front of the engine and this is going to be a water separator fuel filter so you will have that bowl style filter where you would screw off the bowl and then change out the actual filter inside now in front of that is going to be our battery right down here at the front of the machine. Now this looks like this may be a cumbersome deal. It looks like the hood would get in the way, but you can easily remove the hood on these machines to make sure that you can service everything on this engine that you need to. Now, like I said, this is a liquid cooled machine. So over here on the right hand side is where we're gonna have our coolant reservoir. Then right here on top, we can see the top of our radiator. And if you look in between the vent holes over here on the side that are right here next to our steering column, you can look in there and see the actual fins of the radiator. Now, a really neat feature about these machines is since this radiator is so tucked away, it actually is gonna have a pull-out screen over here on the left-hand side where we can pull this screen out and blow this out to make sure that you are keeping that radiator clean when you're going through and doing that mowing. Now, whenever you are wanting to know when is time to do these different services, just like on most other mowers, right here underneath the hood, you are gonna have a service interval chart for all those things on the engine. And then another big service point that a lot of the other mowers are not going to have is here at the rear you are going to have your transmission oil dipstick now moving up into these machines we're moving into that k90 tough torque transmission and you are going to have that option to add that rear pto so this is going to be a serviceable transmission and you are going to have fluid that you have to check you're just going to have to scoot your seat all the way forward and then right here is going to be your fill and dipstick now when we're talking about these liquid cooled mowers it's very very important that we're keeping these side screens clean. That's also why we have that pullout screen that I just showed you. But we're also going to have air intake right here, right underneath our steering wheel. And this is also going to be removable so that we can make sure and be blowing this out and keeping this clean as well. As we know, whenever we're mowing, it's during the summer a lot of times, it's hot, we're getting a lot of that grass. We could get a lot of buildup here as this is where the intake is. So you can raise the hood to clean these screens, but to clean clean this one we're going to have a knob right here in the middle that we can twist off and actually remove this screen for cleaning. Moving to the operator station, before we actually get in and go over the controls, first thing I'd point out is the seat on this machine. This is going to be have the heavily padded high 21 inch back seat here. What's going to have the cut and sewn deer emblem in it. It's going to be that upgraded material here to add to the life of this seat. And it's also going to have a reclining back on it. So we are going to have this knob here on the side that's going to allow you to have some recline to add to that comfort of your ride. And then if we raise that seat up, it is going to have the seat switch made into it. And it's also going to have this big heavy duty suspension system with those two springs and it is going to have fore and aft adjustment on it where you can get that operator closer to the steering wheel. Now, once I hop onto the machine, first thing that like I pointed out before, we are going to have a very large operator station here as this is one of the largest mowers in the lineup. So starting over here to my left, what we're gonna see is we are gonna have that grab handle to get on. We're also gonna have our diesel fill cap over here to the left. Now this is gonna have a 5.2 gallon tank on it. So you have plenty of fuel to get those things done. Now over here to my left, what you'll notice is normally we would have a raise and lower pedal here for our deck. That is not gonna be the case. The only thing over here to the left is going to be this push button in the floorboard for your rear differential lock. Once we move up here onto the dash, we've got quite a few controls. Starting over here to the left, we'll see a middle panel here that is gonna have a line through it. That's gonna indicate that the top switch goes for our 12 volt outlet so we can either turn that on or off and then our bottom switch here is going to go for our lights so we have an off position we can turn on our headlights here with one push and if we push it all the way to the left this is what's going to turn on those rear reversing lights there now moving over towards the middle we're going to have this orange lever here this is going to be our throttle so just right there our rabbit and turtle right below that is going to be this yellow push button now this is going to be our rio button this means rear implement option button so like on a lot of other mowers with this one we cannot mow in reverse 
without first pushing this button. So what we'd have to do if we wanted to mow in reverse, push this button in, start our rear descent with our rear twin touch pedal. Once we get going in reverse, then we can let off of that button, continue to mow in reverse. And then once we go back forward, that's gonna reset this switch system. So then every time that we need to go in reverse, we are mindful and make sure and push that button. Now this is gonna be a safety feature. And it's also one of those things that just helps to remind you that whenever you are mowing, well, I've got to hit this button. So now that I'm thinking about it, I'm also going to take a look behind me before I just start to mow in reverse, making sure that we don't run over any obstacles or anything that might be in the way. Now, whenever we move over here to the right hand side, what we're going to have is, of course, our key switch here to the right of that key switch is going to be our PTO button or our blade engagement. So if we only have the mower deck on, this is going to be for our mower deck. And then if we had rear implement options, then this would also turn on that rear PTO. But it's going to be a pop button where we pull out on it just like that push in to turn it off below that's going to be our parking brake that's still going to work with our foot pedal over here to the right so once we push in on that foot pedal we can push down on our parking brake that's going to release that pedal push in raise up that's going to set that parking brake and then right below that is going to be our cruise control button so like we have on some of our upper series mowers you do have that cruise control where once you get going just like in your car we can hit that cruise control button it is going to keep that mower we're going that same speed so if we're making those laps making those long passes you do have that cruise control just to lessen that fatigue on that driving leg now right down here in between our legs this is going to be where our height of cut adjustment is so it is going to have a dial that's going to go all the way up to four and a half down to one inch in quarter inch increments and then all the way turned around to the bottom is going to be our remove and install position so with this mower you can have either a 48 which is going to be an XL deep deck, or you can have a 54 inch, which is going to be a drive over high capacity or a 60 inch drive over high capacity. And on this mower here, we do have that 54 inch drive over high capacity. So if we wanted to take this deck off, we would spin that around into that install mode, be able to drop this to the, to the ground and drive up over and off of this deck. Now our two levers up here on the column, these are gonna be something that if you haven't gone all the way up into the X700, you might not have ever seen before. And these are gonna be for your two hydraulic controls. So with this mower, you are going to get actual hydraulic valves. So over here on the right hand side, right in front of our floor, you're going to see those two sets of hydraulic valves. And those are going to be for any of those front attachments that you may add to this mower that need hydraulic function and these would be your levers for that. Now, when you have the deck hooked up to this mower, what you're going to have is with your top lever here, this is going to be your raise and lower for the deck. Now, also before we move over to our right-hand side on the foot platform, also what you'll have here is an adjustable steering column. So as you can see, we can grab on this tab here, adjust that column, make sure that that is comfortable for whatever operator is using this machine. Now over here on the right-hand side, what we're gonna have is our twin touch pedal. So we are gonna have that forward and reverse, really simple, just like on most of our other tractor style mowers. And then over here to my right up on the fender, we're going to have that cup holder there and we're also going to have a covered storage compartment here and this is where our deck leveling tools are going to be in place so we have that gauge along with that tool right there on the side easy onboard access for those tools and then last but not least right behind that storage compartment is going to be that 12 volt outlet that we talked about having control of right up here on the dash. Now let's talk about our control panel and some of the things that we're gonna see on it. So over here to the left is where we're going to see our coolant temperature. Over here to the right, this is gonna be our RPM gauge and it lets us know that up here at the top, this is how high our engine needs to be revved up to be in that optimum cutting position. Then we're gonna have this picture of the mower here, right? So what we're going to have here is whenever we have a rear PTO or a front PTO, if we have those and they are engaged, it is actually going to flash up a PTO symbol. So if I turn this key off, you can see those kind of flash up. We'll do that one more time and you can see them really quickly right there and right there. 
So it'll let you know if you have those things attached. Then we're gonna have our fuel gauge here along with our battery meter. Now our plus sign here is going to be what changes our brightness. So to get that to change where we can use it, we're gonna hit our I button. Then we'll see this right here. We can hit that brightness button and you can see it change right there. Four different brightness settings. And to get out of that, we're just gonna hit our I button to go back here to our hours. So very, very bright display. You can see this very well in the sun. You're also gonna have some other warning buttons and things around here on the sides so if you have anything pop up here the machine will tell you multiple different things now we'll go ahead and fire the machine up so you can hear how it sounds now just like on other diesel machines or maybe you're not familiar with this we want to make sure if this is a cold start we turn the key on we're going to see a little symbol down here that looks like a circle with a couple of little squigglies in it. This is going to be our glow plug light. We wanna make sure that it goes off before we start that machine. So we do have that off. We're gonna go ahead and start it up. So here's gonna be in low idle and we can go ahead and raise this machine up. And then back down into low idle. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take the parking brake off Another feature with the X700 series is that all of these machines are going to be power steering models. So you can see just how easy it is for me to turn this wheel. I can do it here with one hand, one finger, very, very easy. Now this is also a four wheels steer model. So we have the four there. You can see that my front wheels are turning and my rear wheels are turning. So very, very smooth here. Then if I wanted to go forward, just as simple as pushing that pedal. I want to go backwards. Once again, very, very easy. We've got those headlights on. I can go ahead and turn those off. If we go all the way back here, we'll show you those rear lights in action. Headlights, rear lights. We can turn those rear lights off or we can go no lights at all. Now, like I talked about before, this is a four wheel machine. So you're going to get very, very tight turns here. Also, when we're talking about that deck lift, that is something that is going to be done a little bit different than what you may be used to if you have never had anything with hydraulic lift. So right now we are set on about four and a quarter. So I'm gonna change that height and right there shows you that the seat switch works because I got up off of it enough that the seat switch went ahead and killed the mower. So we'll go ahead and start this machine back up. I always like to cycle the key back off. We'll go ahead and turn this back on. All right, so now we've got the machine on. Now, like I said, top lever, this is going to be our raise and lower for our mower deck. So pushing up on that top lever is going to lower that mower deck, pulling back is going to raise that up. Now I've got that set at two and a quarter. Of course you can change that to whatever you want, but very, very easy on raising that mower deck up and down. Now, remember that if you are going to be using other implements with this machine that use those hydraulics, these are going to be your control levers. So you do have two sets of hydraulics on here. So for running maybe that front blade or say a snow blower, whatever those things are, we have those two functions. And then our bottom lever here is actually gonna have a float mode on it. That way, if we are running that front blade, but we need it to have a little bit of give to it, we can actually put this bottom lever into float mode to make sure that we are getting that float in the front just like what we would have on the rear of most of our tractors. Now, moving to the mower deck, I talked a little bit about this in the operator station, but what you're going to have is the three different mower deck options. One is gonna be the 48 inch XL deep deck. That is going to be a roll under type deck, just like what you are used to on your X300s, X500s, and even some of your S200 mowers. Now, once we get up to the 54 inch and the 60, now these are going to be the drive over decks. So if you have seen the 1023Es or the 1025Rs, these are going to be very, very similar on this X700 series mower. Now, 
What we have here is going to be the 54. This is going to be a 9 gauge steel. If we move back to the 48, that is going to be 10 gauge steel. And then the 60 inch deck is also going to be that 9 gauge steel. So this is going to be a true drive over deck. It is going to be the high capacity deck, meaning that it's deeper. It's going to handle more material. We're going to have the four gauge wheels all the way around the deck on this machine. We're gonna have this wide discharge chute opening here to make sure to process and disperse that material very, very evenly. You're also gonna have a little bit of protection around your front edges and your trimming side there. That's gonna be to add to the life of this deck. And you're also gonna see the two extra welded on pieces at the front for going up and over and onto this deck, as well as the guards here on top to protect the spindles whenever we are driving this mower up and over. Now you still are going to have grease points on each one of these spindles. There's gonna be holes on the top of those covers so that you can get to those. On one side, you will see that the drive over protection is right over top of that spindle. So you'll see that there's a hole through that drive over protection and through the spindle cover. And then over here on the right hand side, it's actually going to be tucked a little bit more inward. So you're going to have to reach up and over to get to that grease point. And another thing to take note of is that all of your anti-scalping wheels are going to be adjustable up and down. And they're also going to have grease points on them as well to make sure once again, to add to the life of that deck. When you're moving up into the X700 series, you're not only moving up in size, but you're moving up into some of those more premium features. Therefore, there's more grease points, more service points, more things that are going to add to the life of this mower. Now, moving here to the rear of the machine, going back to talking about that little bit more premium feature, one of the things that you might have noticed that I haven't hit on yet are the wheels on this machine. So you are going to have the yellow wheels with that little bit of chrome accent just adding to the premiumness of moving up into this X700 series. Now, when we move to the back, one thing that I like to point out is that you are going to have these cast iron rear axles here. Now, this is going to be something that is only going to be up into that X700 series that is going to add to the strength and durability of this machine, as well as all of the extra holes that you're going to see in this rear frame. This is going to be for adding all of those different rear attachments. Whenever we're talking about with this transaxle, this K90, being able to add in that rear PTO, you're going to have so much more capability here at the rear that they have designed into the frame, all of these different attachment points for different things. So not only for those bagger kits, which is an option, mulch kits are also an option but we have all of those other rear implements that we could put back here so we put on a spreader or a tiller or a aerator any of those different things we're going to have the hookups here at the rear that we need to make sure it'd be able to do that job. Now, last but not least, let's talk about warranty and price. So warranty on this machine is gonna be a four year, 700 hour warranty, whichever comes first. So if we get to that four year mark first, that is where your warranty is going to end. Or if you happen to reach the 700 hours before the four years, then that is where your warranty will end. And that is gonna be a bumper to bumper warranty that covers everything except your normal wear items. I always like to remind people such things as belts, blades, tires, Things like that are not going to be covered. But as far as your engine, transaxle, all of those things, four year, 700 hour. Now, whenever we're talking about price on this machine, one thing to keep in mind is when we move to the X700 series, we are pricing the tractor itself and the deck separately. So whenever you're going in and you're looking at buying one of these, you say, hey, I want the X754. They're going to say, what size of deck do you want? you have the option of that 48, the 54 drive over, or the 60 drive over, then you're gonna have one other option that you might not think about, and that's going to be the way that the deck hooks up to the machine. So whenever we're talking about being able to remove the deck, this one is going to be driven by a shaft. We're not going to have a belt that runs off of the engine back to the mower deck. So you're gonna have two different options. You're gonna have one option that is a manual hookup shaft, meaning you're gonna have to drive over that mower, then reach underneath and hook that shaft up, or you're going to have the auto connect option, which is like what you would see on a 1025R or 1023E, that as soon as you drive over that mower, it's going to click into place and you're not having to reach underneath to hook anything up. So these are all gonna be things that add to the price of that machine. 
This machine here, looking at list price wise, you're looking at around $14,000 for the tractor and then a couple th thousand extra whenever we're talking about the deck and the auto connect feature. So just make sure to keep in mind whenever you are going out and you're pricing these machines that you're going to your local dealer, you're making sure and having those options explained to you, the deck sizes, the way that the deck is going to hook up and the price of the machine. And then make sure and ask about any discount programs, incentive programs, things like that that are out there to make sure and get the best price. But guys, I hope this video was helpful. I hope that you liked this video. If you did, we just ask you to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Also guys, if you're needing any parts for your John Deere equipment, make sure to go check us out at 247parts.com. And as always guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Hey guys, make sure to check out this cool video and this one. Buy your parts right up here and subscribe right here.